It's a windy day here on Forever Home. Today we're talking storm doors. Let's get going. Chances are, if you've got storm doors on your house, you've had a problem at some point or another with the wind coming and ripping them off your house. They swing open, they catch, they rip the screws out of the top, they have those kind of challenges. And over time, as the rain and the water gets to those doors, even the ones that are you know, wood with an aluminum exterior, they start to sag, they start to drag. And how do you fix that? How do you address that? That's what we're talking about here today. Customer called us with a very beautiful, older style wood frame door, and it's got different inserts that you can switch up between the glass and the screen. And she really wanted to preserve that look. She didn't want to get into what's commonly available in the home store. She liked this look, but the problem was the door was sagging and this outer edge was dragging. It wouldn't close, it wouldn't latch. And how are we going to solve that? We talked about putting what I call a Z-bar, a turnbuckle in there, where we put some screws in the bottom and, the, and up on the side and we tighten up the, the turnbuckle there and it pulls, it lifts this outer corner up, but then you wind up with a big aluminum bar on the inside of your door from this corner up to the glass. Or you can get an extension and we can go even higher with it. But that would have precluded her from being able to switch out that glass and that screen on a seasonal basis without taking apart the turnbuckle system. So what are some other ways that we could address this? And we talked about getting some really long screws. And you know, could we drill some holes in the end, of the end grain of the door here and, and recess some like six inch screws, come in and catch this lower panel and pull that and, and pull this tight to keep it from moving so that we could take the planer to the bottom of this wood door shorten it up so that it would finish closing correctly um, so that was one other option that we looked at i'll show you the solution that we settled on what we wound up doing is going out and grabbing a brass click plate and so this is a normal off the shelf brass click clip uh, kick plate we took all the hardware off the door we got this on here centered and square and then what we did is we drilled a quarter inch hole and ran a quarter 22 inch bolt through here. We put some very nice finishing washers on both sides to, uh, to give it more of a finished look. And I made sure we kept those, those screw heads vertical so no dust is gonna get stuck in them. And we, what we're hoping here is that the eight screws that are in this panel across this side, plus the two in the hardware, plus the bolt on that side, is gonna give us enough uh, bite and grab on the rest of the door for this bolt to hold this vertical piece plumb and in place and not allow it to drop any further. Now that we've locked this door together that it can't continue to sag, this, the weight of the side of the door can't continue to drop because it's locked together with the bolt and all these screws, that's gonna allow us to then take the planer, shave a quarter inch off the bottom of the door and set this up so that it'll shut all by itself. So that's beautiful. Now the other thing that we had to do is you'll notice right in here that we did have to lower the latch about a quarter inch because that's where this piece was now uh, hitting in because the door had fallen so far. So we adjusted that and they'll just have to get some paint on there at some point and some paint on the bottom of the door. And uh, that's gonna solve this problem. Now, what are the other, some of the things that we run into with storm doors? If the, if this gets ripped really hard, we've seen these pieces pull out and it is possible to take an oscillating tool. We can cut this off, put a new piece of wood in there and then uh, wood putty paint this and then get some really long three, four inch, five inch screws and try to get back into the stud, assuming you don't have an alarm system doorbell, those things on that side of the situation when that's down top. The other thing that you can do that really save yourself is set up a system like this. Uh, you've got a spring loaded catch, all right? That's gonna absorb the impact, the shock of this opening. You've got a keeper spring that keeps this from draping, hitting the glass and hitting you in the head. And then it's connected to the door here. And that's just a simple, it's just screwed onto the door, which works just fine. I've also seen them where they through bolt all the way through to this side if you've got real heavy winds. The other thing you can look at is possibly handing your door the opposite direction so that it swings uh, where the backside's going against the prevailing wind where the wind's trying to shut the door. And even if that means you have to cross hand going in where the door handle for the storm door is on the left and the inside door is on the right, sometimes in a high wind situation that might be beneficial to do that. So those are some of the things that you can address. The Z-bar is obviously the easiest, but on a door like this, that wasn't gonna work. How are we gonna solve it? The kick plate did a phenomenal job, we think, of making that, uh, taking care of that. We highly recommend this system up here. If you've got problems with the wind grabbing your door and keeping it open, this will absolutely save your keepers down here at the bottom of your spring-loaded exhaust, spring-loaded, uh, yeah, at the top and the bottom and keep you from ripping those out. But, uh, what this does is it does put a lot, a lot of torque on the door. So when the door gets pulled, it catches at the top and the bottom's still kind of swinging. So 
it's it doesn't solve all the problems but it absolutely keeps it from getting whipped completely around and smashing in the back of the house and breaking off and ripping screws out so that's a good way to get started so that's how we solve this z-bar turnbuckle is the other the other method or we could have just replaced the door but she really likes the charm of this and she likes the ability to be able to swap those panels out and then from the outside the only thing that you're going to see are those two little brass bolts one on either side and if they decided they didn't like them they could paint them to match the rest of the door and that would be fine as well you do have a lot of options with storm door full view half view um, ones with the screens that retract and roll out of the top our recommendation is never spend less than 200 dollars on a storm door because 100 dollars specials are garbage um, we, we like larson larson's a good brand name they've worked well for us they're relatively straightforward to install they've put together a good system for that and um, we like the way that they go together. And if you put some of these extra precautions on there to help protect you from the wind, those doors can last an awful long time. But you wanna get one of the nicer ones that's got you know full con continuous edging all the way around where you know, it just looks like it's well built. And if you're sitting there in the store looking at them, you can tell which ones are, are kind of chintzily put together and which ones have some mass to them. And you wanna make sure you get a door that's good, solid. It's gonna hold up to the abuse that it's gonna take because that's protecting you from a lot of things. It's, it's keeping the wind driven rain from getting into your door jams and and, and allowing your weather seal in there to not have to fight so hard to keep things out. Um, and it's, you know, keeping the elements out, keeping the wind out and giving the opportunity to open that interior door, let some extra light in, maybe let some breeze through. Uh, the storm door really is a workhorse on your house as far as helping keep things protected. If you haven't upgraded your doors to composite jams and fiberglass doors, if you've got a steel door, you've got wood jams, storm doors are absolutely a great way to help prolong the life of that part of your home. Uh, and the other thing to do is obviously keep those jams painted. If you don't keep them painted, the water's gonna get in and you're gonna wind up with water damage, not just to the door jam, but possibly to the subfloor, to the ribbon joist, to the subfloor system underneath. It's very important to keep your doors painted and, and, and keep up with the routine maintenance on that. And like I said, the storm door is that extra belt and suspenders just to help keep the weather out so that you're not having challenges. So that's how we solve this problem here today. If we can solve a problem for you, roofing, siding, windows, doors, decks, finished basements, bathroom renovations, kitchen remodels, anything on the interior home, plumbing, electrical, drywall, spackle, paint, build you an addition, a custom greenhouse, a new garage, give our team a call. We have a dedicated office staff standing by to answer your questions. Weekdays, 9.30 in the morning until 2 in the afternoon at 484-748-0008. Choose option 2 for Cope Built, your full-service construction and renovation company, and extension 2 for new projects. We are your Pennsylvania home improvement contractor number 88078. Remember, we're finished with it. You're going to be proud to say it's not just done. It was Cope Built. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you click that like button. Leave a comment below. Let us know what you learned here today. If you're watching on Facebook, please uh, like our page and keep up with everything that's going on here. And we look forward to catching you guys on the next episode of Forever Home. Bye for now.